we're finally ready to get into the nitty gritty of modular synthesis. And so we're going to be working from absolute scratch, as you can see here, and making our own instrument. And this is the first time I've ever tried to teach synthesis methods from such a, a ground up approach. But I think it's going to work really well because what we'll be able to do is isolate all of the different modules, the common modules that you find in your hardwired synthesizers, that you find in your software synthesizers, and have it make sense, understand why things typically do go in a certain way, and that it's okay to experiment and maybe try to mess around with that a little bit so that you can come up with more diverse and interesting sounds. That's kind of the difference between modular synthesizers and you know, the everyday quote unquote hardwired synthesizer is that that one is taking the signal flow question out of the equation. It's assuming that you want, for example, usable sounds. And so it's going to go oscillator, filter, amplifier, right? Okay, the basic like signal flow. But what if you want to throw other things in there? That's where modular really um, comes out on top. But I think this would serve as a great beginning or, you know, beginner's guide to synthesis regardless of how much experience you come from, even if you're not interested in modular at all, modular doesn't just have to mean wacky uh, blips and bloop sounds, right? I know that's what I used to associate when I heard modular synthesizers. Uh, that would be like the first thing that would come into my mind. But we can create just traditional synthesizers in here or things that are very experimental. So it's not as if we're going to be um, limited in any way, shape, or form. All right, introduction out of the way. Let's actually get into it. We have our two outputs here, and we could have started from complete scratch and then created our own outputs, but I thought that would be like a little bit overkill. So we're just going to go ahead and use these two from the get-go. Uh, we have then, uh, or I should say, these outputs are then going to run into this final fader here, and this is more or less your gain stage. So if you've already created your instrument, but then you want to go into something different, like let's say this is in your DAW, and you want to follow Reactor with some kind of a, a chorus or an EQ or a compressor, you might need to adjust that gain stage out there. You also have your panic button. I'm just showing this to you because we can't modulate this slider up here. All of our instrument stuff is going to be happening down in the actual panels. So just as an FYI, we're not going to be like hooking up from or I should say there's a, there are two invisible cables that hook up from these two line outputs into the final mixer slash amplifier up there. Okay, so we can imagine that we've just bought ourselves a Eurorack case. We have the power supply. Everything is good to go. And to our left and our right, we have two huge buckets just full of modules that we can now start to bring in and create our own signal flow for. So you can see I can open up my library here and I have all of these different modules that I can use. And we'll be getting into a lot of these. We're going to basically stick to the factory library though. Um, you can obviously go online and download things from the user library, but the factory library is going to get us started. And once you get used to these modules, you should have no problem experimenting with all the other stuff that's out there. So what I want to do in this video is I just want to hear a sound. I want to figure out how I can get some sound to come through our outputs here. So I'm looking down this list and I'm seeing a lot of abbreviations. AMP, FLT, MIX, MOD, OSC, PRO, SEQ. And these are our different categories of modules. So let's just use sequencer for an example. SEQ stands for sequencer. So we have one that gives us eight steps. Okay, we can see that like so. And we have one that gives us four mods. All right, so they're going to be slightly different, but they both do basically the same thing. They're sequencers. If I go down and I start looking in my other category, okay, here's another sequencer. This is a, a clock divider. So this is clearly working a little bit differently. Still a sequencer. If I go down and keep looking, there might be one more sequencer in here. And I think it's actually going to be right at the very end. We have this kind of specialty sequencer here from uh, more the West Coast style of modular synthesizers. But I don't think a sequencer is going to be capable of generating a sound for me. If I go and I take my output and I run it in here, we're not hearing anything. We're not even seeing any level coming in. That's because a sequencer isn't capable of generating sound. But we are familiar with something that does generate sound that would be a sampler and we've looked at that in the past so there are no samplers by default i'm not seeing an samp or anything like that 
Um, but I do know that some of them exist. For example, somebody has created one and you can see we have a samplers category here, actually two different ones, a scanner and a looper. Let's bring in the looper. Let's hook that up. And we're not hearing any sound as of right now. And that's because we don't have a sample loaded in. So let's go and load in some kind of a sample here. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. And just like that, we're getting sound and it's playing back for us. And of course, we have some wonderful, controls that we can wonderful, work with. Wonderful, wonderful. And so this now then just becomes a matter of for the most part actually in here, highlighting over the parameter and we have our info view turned on and it will then tell us what it does. So for example, I hold over the smear, smear. After adjusting the start and end points, the internal oscillator immediately adjusts its speed, causing all sorts of strange sounds. Clean. After adjusting the start and end points, the new points will take effect after the current loop completes or a manual reset is triggered. All right, so I like smear. I'm getting some kind of more interesting effects all in real time. But unfortunately, I have no way of kind of modulating this without just using my mouse. Oh, but oh wait, I do. And that's what these modulation imports are going to be used for. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But for the most part, we're not going to be working with samplers in here. We're going to be working with oscillators. And almost everybody is familiar with what an oscillator does. It generates some kind of sound for you typically based on more of a mathematical formula like we've sort of talked about before with the harmonic series and additive and so forth different wave shapes all right so let's go and see can we find an oscillator in here we can this one is just called oscillator i'm going to hook this up i can't wait to hear the sound and i i, I see that sound is coming in but i'm not able to hear anything hmm Interesting. That could be for maybe two reasons. Reason one is whatever is being generated is below the range of, of human hearing or whatever being generated is above the range of human hearing. And so what we have here in the center, if I highlight over this, is coarse tuning. So let's try coarse tuning this thing and turning it down. Take a look up here. What do you notice? This is actually following the motion of a sine wave. It's going up above, it's coming back down below, and it's following that same pattern. Let's see what happens if I change the wave shape. Aha! What this is telling me, and this is maybe a little bit more of like an advanced concept, this is showing me that this is actually a low frequency oscillator at this point. I'm able to actually track the movement of what's going on there with the sound. So this is definitely below our range of human hearing. So let's try turning it up instead. Oop, wrong one. You got to make sure you're actually able to grab from the top. So I do apologize about that. Ooh, I'm starting to hear something. Cool, so we can go up to this loud here, right? We can go up 48 steps above whatever's at zero, but what's actually setting that? And I actually don't know. The reason why I have to go all the way up to 48 is because this is not by default hooked into a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI controller. If I'm playing notes on my MIDI controller and you can see the little blue dot lighting up, no change is occurring. And that's because nothing is in here controlling the pitch. So I have to control the pitch manually. By default, this is set to key tracking, but I can actually turn that off. And now what we get is a readout in Hertz. So we know that 32 Hertz is really, really low. So I'm probably not gonna be able to hear that. I can just barely hear it. But as I start to bring this up now, if we go to like 300 Hertz, 400 Hertz, something like that, we can hear the sine wave like so. We can obviously adjust that.
But man, that is really harsh. We need to be able to control this volume. Well, I can do it with the slider up here, but we said we didn't want to touch that and it would be really annoying for us to have to constantly be, be dragging this up and down. So we're going to need something in between the output of our oscillator and the final outputs if we want to try and control the volume of this. And that's what we're going to be looking at next. But just to kind of show you how this works even further is that this output here is actually following along with whatever happens as we change this. But believe it or not, we can do something very different. Uh, we could actually run all of these different shapes into some kind of a mixer. And we have a little bit of a mixer here. We have two different outputs, right? So what if I want to hear the sign in the left? Doesn't matter how I change this. And the saw on the right. That may not be the best example because you're losing uh, the sine wave. So instead, let's do the uh, sine in the triangle. Right, and you can hear that like so. Or maybe more interesting would be to take the output and put that over here. And this one is following along. Whereas the sine wave isn't. So this offers up a lot of control when you think about it. And when we get to the LFOs, you'll see how we can very easily use this oscillator as an LFO and we take the frequency and go down below the range of our human hearing. All right, so you can, if you want, go through and if you have this instrument, if you don't, it doesn't matter, but you can go through and you can maybe look at some of the other oscillators that come with this. Uh, you could go into the Monarch. This is more of like the uh, Mini Moog oscillator. You can hook that up, listen to how it sounds. But as of right now, it's going to be kind of annoying um, because whoop, there you go. That's what I was talking about. We're unable to really control that a lot further. And again, this one gives us key tracking. Or we can turn that off. But you'll see that this one doesn't give us individual output over each of these waveforms. So this is only capable of generating uh, one waveform at a time. So if you want to do what we did before and be able to play, uh, you know, one of these like pulse waves and, and a sawtooth wave at the same time, we would actually have to uh, bring in two of these or uh, actually duplicate this. And then we could take the other one, for example, and go in like that. And then we could obviously be able to hearing. Something along those lines. So just wanted to uh, kick this off by getting some sound out of this instrument. And now it's going to be a matter of us figuring out how to control this a little bit more. And that's what we'll be looking at next.